Mark chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse uh, 40. And it says, There came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, and put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto, the, unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day you've given us. We're grateful for the opportunity to come and worship and to hear your word. And we just pray that our, our uh, minds might be alert, our spirits might welcome your word. And uh, we pray for the activity of the Holy Spirit throughout this place, that every heart would be stirred today in Jesus' holy name. And everyone said amen. 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 There's some verses back in Leviticus uh, that kind of set the stage for us a little bit on this story. Leviticus chapter 13 and verses 45 and 46 uh, it, it tells us, The leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent or torn, his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean, unclean. In verse 46, All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled, and he is unclean, and he shall dwell alone. Outside the camp shall be his habitation. So, uh, 13, 45, and 46. Can you put it for me in the uh, NIV? Thank you, Becky. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes and let their hair be unkempt and cover the lower part of their face and cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone and they must live outside the camp. It's an old story about disease and social distancing and mask wearing. The leper was required to cover his face and also to announce his unclean state. He was to keep his distance and the commentaries differ on how far was acceptable. I read on the most extreme distance I read was you had to stay at least 150 feet away from anyone else. Uh, I, I read lesser distances, but if you did cross the line on what was acceptable, you were apt to be have rocks thrown at you. Uh, so you weren't welcome to come close. And they let you know. The story is about a a leper, and to the Jew, the leprosy was the utmost uncleanness. Tammy's going to sing a song that uh, she sang uh, a few weeks ago. I asked her to sing it again today. And it's about being made clean. And you've heard there's power in the blood. Would you be clean? You don't have to live, leave, leave here today in an unclean state. If you are unclean, you can be made clean. This uh, leper, he, he had this utmost uncleanness. It's a horrible skin disease and affecting the nerves. So it was a nerve disease as well, a nervous nerve disorder. Actually, you would lose feeling in your extremities which caused huge problems. Some of you aren't always grateful for the pain that you incur with your feet or your hands, but if you had no feeling, I, I guarantee you'd want it back. Uh, it's a great protection for you. But when you contracted this disease, you were quarantined from the rest of the population, and the leper became the ultimate outcast. He was untouchable. He experienced a meager existence of poverty and sickness, always keeping your distance 
and always having to cry out to others in warning, I'm unclean. Unclean. Sentenced to the outskirts of society and community. He was uh, under the, it wasn't a stay at home mandate for him, it was a stay out of town mandate. Sound like something out of the old westerns, doesn't it? He was under the mandate to stay out of town. Don't come close to town. Because of his disease, he would, he would uh, risk stoning if he, that was the method of execution, and, and that's what he would risk if he overstepped his bounds. So the behavior that day of the leper in Mark 1 was strictly forbidden. And you, you, can, you know that. I, I'm pretty sure you know that. I just try to reinforce that. But he dared to seek Jesus out at the risk of his life. He was desperate enough to risk his life to come to Jesus. And it says in, there's two other parallel passages, not only recorded in Mark, but it's in Matthew and it's also in Luke, the parallel passages. In Mark, it tells us that he was kneeling. Uh, in Luke 5, 12, it says he fell on his face. And in Matthew 8, verse 2, it says he was worshiping. Here he soon assumed. On his knees, on his face, worshiping Jesus. That was his approach to Jesus. Not a bad approach to Jesus. The leper at the feet of Jesus couldn't be in a better place. On his knees, on his face, worshiping, and he begins his prayer. In Luke 5, 12, it says he besought him. In Mark 1, 4, it says he was beseeching him. That's a pleading. That's an urgent plea for help. He pleads with Jesus. And his prayer is this, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. That's his prayer. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. It's verbatim in Matthew 8, 2 and Luke 5, 12. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I think Lord is omitted in one of the, one of the Gospels. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. He is reverent and he is urgent. He is humble and he is believing. And it's a short nine-word prayer. It's a nine-word prayer. Don't ask for a preacher to pray because he'll pre pray more than nine words. You know that. But this guy, is a, you're kind of, he models prayer for us. He gets right to the point. It, he, it's a short nine-word prayer of faith, I would call it. He has absolutely no doubt whatsoever that Jesus could heal him. No doubt. He's essentially saying, Lord, I know you can. You have the power to heal. That was his confession of faith. That's extreme confidence in the ability of Jesus. Uh, this leper had it. I think the church today ought to adopt it. How many of you have extreme, extreme confidence in the ability of Jesus today? This man was humble. He said, if thou wilt. He said, if you're willing. I'll tell you, and I, I want you to ponder it. I want you to think about it. But demanding from Jesus just wasn't in his, heart, in his heart. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But he was making no demands on Jesus. You'll hear a little bit of things on God and so forth. But I, I kind of question whether we should be doing that or not. Uh, if there's any commanding or demanding, it ought to be from his part, not ours. Uh, Jesus even prayed later, and you remember in the garden, it's not my will, but thine be done. And that's essentially what he was saying. It's not what I want, but if you want, it's what you want. That's what he, he put it upon Jesus, if you're willing, if thou wilt. I don't know if you will, he said, but I know you can. And that's a prayer of faith. He was saying... I know you could, but would you be willing to help someone like me? Would you be willing to heal someone like me? And uh, we've been going through these amazing stories of people encountering Jesus, and I think we're up to about nine or ten, and 
of these special encounters that people had with Jesus recently as we reviewed them. And in Mark 141, it says some amazing words. It says Jesus was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. And I love this snapshot of Jesus. How many of you appreciate the compassion of Jesus? Without the compassion of Jesus, we're in big trouble. Jesus was moved with compassion. Desperation on the part of the leper, a really good thing if it gets you to the right place with the right person. And his desperation got him in the right place with the right person. And Jesus was moved with compassion toward him. His simple prayer, if thou wilt, thou canst. Lord, if thou wilt, thou can makes me clean. He addresses Jesus as Lord, which is significant. He confesses that Jesus is able. He just questions whether he's willing to help him at the moment. And it says Jesus was moved with compassion. And as he was moved with compassion, it says he put forth his hand. And it says he touched him. That's forbidden. I could take you to the Old Testament and show you where God said you don't touch that which is unclean. That's forbidden activity. But he put forth his hand and he touched him. What the law said he shouldn't do, he does. It's radical behavior. you got to know everyone is aghast. That's, that's watching. And he says, compassion. And he says, I will. He said, I will. He, he said, I want to help you. I will. Boy, that I will is good, isn't it? And it says Jesus touched him deliberately. The Bible says when he, he touched him, you, you got to know that this is not an accident. Jesus is not just accidentally. No, he put forth his hand with purpose, deliberately, intentionally touching this man that nobody else would dare touch. Everyone else was recoiling in horror, you got to know. They, they just were flabbergasted. But Jesus has no fear of defilement at this point. And he reaches for the diseased man and he touches him. And the crowd surely is stunned, surely is shocked. They are so surprised. And uh, the gasp of the onlookers must have been numerous. You could hear it. You can still hear it today, I think. There was no disease transmitted to Jesus that day. On the contrary, there was a transmission of healing. Healing anointing was released into the leper. Jesus saw man, not a disease. Jesus saw a real person. Jesus saw a person of value and worth. The man was disgusting to Jesus. This was a man that he would eventually go to the cross and die for. Uh, you talk about making someone clean. He would shed his blood that day and sins would be forgiven. To Jesus, everybody is somebody, regardless of race or color or financial means or social status or moral status. Everybody counts. Don't imagine yourself to be unimportant to Jesus because you would be very wrong. Each one of you that are here today and each one under the sound of my voice today are important to Jesus. The leper meets with the willingness of Jesus. He said, I will. And then he speaks and says, be thou clean. And that's the command that's the divine fiat. That's the command. of It reminds you of the creation account. Let there be. And he, he said, be thou clean. And then in verse 42, I, I, I just love it out of Mark 1, 42. It says, as soon as he had spoken, as soon as he had spoken, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Say cleansed. It's more than a healing, it's a cleansing. Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? 
Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? This guy has sets a good pattern for us all because there's a leprosy of the soul that we sometimes conceal, but it's there without the blood of the under this horrible disease of leprosy of the soul, the sin of the soul. We have to come like this man did with holy reverence. We come with deep humility in our diseased state. We come in faith and we come to Jesus and we experience his, yes, be thou clean, be thou clean. In 1 John 1, 9 it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, say cleanse us. 1 John 1, 9, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We've all acted in an unrighteous manner in our life. But God has cleansing for us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, it makes me think, makes me think uh, concerning even our day. Do we view others as potential carriers? Do we view others as great danger to us? you got to know Jesus didn't live like that. And we as believers, we've been sent as ambassadors for Jesus. And so let's, let's, let's distinguish you know, let's let's make sure that that's the way God wants us to live our lives. This leper experienced not just a healing, but a cleansing. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus doesn't look at people like me as a threat. <laughs> but he, you know, he loved me and he touched me and he healed me. And he has healing and cleansing for all of us. In Luke 5.12, a parallel passage, it says this. It's a point that you don't want to miss on the story. It says he was full of leprosy. And almost all of the commentaries uh, agree on this thought. The full of leprosy indicates that the leprosy was at at an advanced stage. In fact, it would be the final stages of his leprosy. So his life was threatened by what was happening with his body at this time. He could have been very close to death the last stages of the disease. And he decides he will risk punishment by stoning to get to Jesus. By the way, another part of this story I think we sometimes miss was he was called a leper. He was known by his condition. That's not fair. He was a real person. And Jesus saw him as a person, not as a leper. I've referred to him as a leper a lot this morning, but it's not right for me to do so, really. He had a name, and perhaps he had a family back home that he hadn't been able to be with for a long, long time. He was unclean, and this unclean man with leprosy had responsibility to keep that distance from everyone. Except lepers, they had leper colonies. But you'll notice in the Leviticus writings, it was if, there, you know, if you were the only one, you were alone on the outside of the camp. You were on the, out, on, on the outskirts of the community or of the town, the village, or so forth. You had to stay at a distance. Now, you've got to realize the economic impact here. He couldn't work. He couldn't be around other people. So he lost his income. He had lost his way of making a living. He couldn't worship. He wasn't welcome in church anymore because he was defiled. Now he can't work. He can't worship. He's excluded from society. Well, there's a, just a whole lot against this guy. One thing uh, we need to know, all things being equal, I think, unclean, uncleanliness passes to clean things, infections happen. Unclean is passed to the clean, except, say except, except with Jesus. His cleanness overpowers the unclean. We see it here. Without hesitation and so full of compassion, he touches the leper leper, and, and is not afraid of what might happen happened to him I don't know how long it had been I don't know how long he had leprosy but uh, he had not felt the touch of another you got to know for a long time there was no handshakes and there was no hugs kind of like what's forbidden now no handshakes no hugging definitely no kissing 
No touch of another. All he had was memories from his past. If he had a wife, if he had kids. All he had was memories of all of that. And now, for the first time in a real long time, someone doesn't withdraw, but he reaches forth and touches him. wonder what that felt like. Bill Gaither, I think, wrote a song, He Touched Me. How many of you are glad to have the touch of Jesus Christ on your life? Now suddenly he's transformed. I don't know if he watched it with his eyes, but his sin, his skin cleared right up. And if he had lost sensitivity, if he had nerve damage, he was getting his feeling back. He was getting the feeling back and maybe his feet and his legs and maybe his, uh, his hands and, and all of what was wrong with his flesh was being healed just right before his very eyes. He could feel it in his body when just as soon as Jesus said, be thou, be made clean, it says as soon as he had spoken, it says immediately, it says the leprosy departed from him. It's like he cast it out. The, the outcast, the exile, away from home, Everything he had at home was left behind. And now, at the feet of Jesus, he's made clean. He's made clean. What an amazing event. If you've never been made clean. Uh, I had to preach right after Tammy sang this song the other day. And I, I couldn't hardly get my words to come out after she sang it. I just... I, when she sang it, I was just overwhelmed with the thought that God could make somebody like me clean. And I know that he can make you clean today.